All right, friends, so on September the 1st, 1957, this is a picture of Elvis Presley in Tacoma, Washington. He played a 2 p.m. show, the only afternoon show of 1957 that Elvis would perform. He wore the gold LeMay famous uh, jacket to this performance. And as you can see in this picture, it says, greater than ever, Elvis Presley, Jailhouse Rock. And there's Elvis on stage. Now look at the stands behind him. Look at that white long um, wall that runs at the top. Look at the fans. And now look in 2020 where I'm standing at, guys. I'm right here where Elvis would have been on the stage in this area. You can see the, uh, that walkway up the stands there in the picture. And that's directly behind the stage in the picture. When we go back and look, I'll point it out on screen there. There it is. But Elvis was here, friends. He played That's All Right, Mama. He played Jailhouse Rock. He plays uh, Blue Suede Shoes. All those classics that you fans enjoy and love of Elvis. Elvis shook up Tacoma, Washington on September the 1st, 1957. Over 4,000 fans were right here where we are standing at. And Elvis arrived in a Cadillac left in a Cadillac before they even knew. And then later that night, he played another show in Tacoma at a place that has since been knocked down. Of course, it was Six Stadium. And he didn't get there until 10 p.m. that night because this show ran, ran longer and he wore him out and stuff. But Elvis did play right here where we are at. And just like Spa Guy says, another piece of the Elvis puzzle, friends. And luckily, we have pictures from fans on that day. Check that out. Look at that. There he is, guys. Look at the stands behind him in that picture. Look at that Go LeMay uh, jacket. And now look at the stands today. Luckily, once again, here they are, what, 60-something years later, still here. So I want to read you a few articles that I found from people that were actually here at the Lincoln Bowl on that day afternoon of September the 1st, 1957. This was uh, from the Tacoma, Washington News, and here's what they said. So an 18-year-old Arlene Hedrith just had to see Presley in the flesh when he came to Tacoma. I can remember lying on the floor in the living room watching that and, and my dad just howling, she recalls 50 years later. And my mother was having a fit because I was watching him do these things. My mother was having a cow because I was going to go to this thing. Arlene told her boyfriend, you know, you got to get these tickets or, or we won't be boyfriend and girlfriend anymore. Well, the boyfriend got them. Carol Norman was at the lower end of Presley's demographic spectrum in 1957, but the experience was all the more intense because of her tender age. Elvis roped a crowd in and had them all in his control. Heartbreak Hotel, that's all right, Mama, too much. Ready, Teddy, don't be cruel. Hound Dog, I thought I would go deaf. The screaming, it, it just got louder and louder. I was 11 years old, and I have never been a part of anything so awesome. Beverly reflected on the lasting impact of having seen Elvis in Tacoma in 1957. I did not realize that it was a historical and hysterical moment, and have always been glad that I got to be there and see young Elvis at the beginning of his huge career. How could we know that he would be the king for so many years? I did see Elvis two more times, once in Las Vegas and once in Hawaii, but it was never, ever as exciting as the first time. Here's another great story. Living in a small town southeast of Tacoma, Janet Meyer and her friend were on the road at 5.30 in the morning hoping to be first in line for the 2 p.m. show. They got seats right up front, which led to Janet's photograph, which I am showing on screen, appearing in the News Tribune the next morning. They had a barricade set up in the front, she explained, and they had some young men in black pants and white shirts. And for some reason, my girlfriend and I went right through those barricades. I can't explain it. And what I was doing when they took that picture was I was picking up some dirt from where he had walked for a girl who was on the other side of the barricades. She had a baby uh, food jar. Fifty years later, Meyer still mourned the passing of that dirt she collected for herself that day. One day when I was moving, it fell off the shelf in the cupboard, and my husband sucked it up with a vacuum, and I was devastated. Goodness sakes, it probably lasted 20 years with me. To everyone else, it was just dirt in a mayonnaise jar. But to me, it was a treasured footprint. Right here where I am standing, Elvis definitely, and I have proof, was here. 
Hey, subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos. Thanks for watching. I'm Trey Miller. I'll catch you down the road. Until next time, I'll see you later. So friends, this is how the newspaper article described Elvis leaving this show here at the uh, Lincoln Bowl. Elvis did a Douglas Fairbanks type leap from the stage, raced to the waiting limousine and was whisked away in a cloud of dust as shouts died on the lips of his fans. Girls dragging their boyfriends by the hand rushed to the spot where Elvis vaulted into the car. They scooped up the dirt, kissed it and poured it into the pockets, into their pockets and purses. Then they tore off to the stands, these wives and mothers of tomorrow, to where a guy was doing a brisk business in Elvis Presley buttons, hats, and, and pictures. And with that being written, friends, Elvis has left the Lincoln Bow.